I'm Gaz, and this is Let's Play Wizardry 2, The Knight of Diamonds. In this version, Knight of Diamonds was labeled as the third game, however, it is actually the second game in the original series. I don't know why they changed the order, maybe it was just a mistake by the programmers. Nonetheless, you can play this one right after the first one with your previous characters. This version has significant differences from the original computer version, though. When you transfer your characters over, they aren't actually the previous group, but rather descendants of them. Uh, your stats lose a few points, you go back to level 1, all of your items and gold are removed. Uh, basically, you start over, but with overpowered characters. In the original game, you had to play with your previous party because the game was otherwise too difficult for starting new ones. The maps and puzzles are also completely different from the computer version. I had to do some digging online to get the right ones for this game. So let's go over the backstory for this. After the defeat of Wordna, Trebor sent his remaining army to clean out the rest of the maze. Upon extermination of every monster, Trebor decided to make certain that Wordna, who was aided by the Dark Arts, would never be able to return. Attempting to use the amulet much like Wordna did, Trebor was able to slightly alter the structure of the labyrinth below him. He ordered guards to forever patrol the passages of the dungeon to make sure that Wordna would not be able to return from the dead. So possessed did he become with the concept of Wordna's return, the overlord soon drove himself to the point of suicide. Rumors say that his ghost still walks the levels of the maze below the castle, looking for Wordna. With Trebor dead, the power of the city was once again divided between the High Council and the royal family. Hailed as heroes, your party was offered one of the highest honors in the kingdom. It's been about two years since the death of Trebor, and now another crisis has erupted. The city of Lilgamin had always been under the protection of a powerful artifact known as the Staff of Nilda. The staff surrounded the city with a magic field that protected it from evil. Anyone who wished harmful intent for the city of Lilgamin would find themselves unable to enter its gates, while those who wished it no harm could come and go as they pleased. This seemed to provide the perfect defense, however, there was a way around it. The staff could only stop evil from entering the city, but if evil was born inside the walls, that person was unaffected by the staff. Of course it is known, Wordna was native to the kingdom, but little did anyone know there was another dark soul born in the city walls. His name was Davilpus. Davilpus called upon the darkest of monsters. Aided by the agents of evil, he stormed the castle and slew the royal family. Only Prince Alavik and his sister, Princess Margda, escaped. They knew there was only one hope of defeating Davilpus, and that was with the staff itself. The staff of Nilda is located in the underground temple beneath the royal castle. It was placed there by a legendary hero known only as the Knight of Diamonds. In order to handle the staff, a person must be dressed from head to toe in the armor of that legendary knight. The armor is scattered throughout the temple and is heavily guarded. Entering the temple undetected, the prince was able to retrieve all the armor and eventually the staff as well. Prepared for battle, the prince confronted Davilpus in an epic battle. As the prince landed the killing blow, Davilpus uttered a curse so powerful that the castle was reduced to rubble, leaving the temple of Nilda exposed. With a flash of light, both the prince and the body of Davilpus were gone. The staff was gone as well. On that day, the goddess Nilda spoke to the people of the city. I have found this city unworthy of my protection and have hidden my staff within the depths of my temple. If the staff is sought out and returned to my chamber, I will once again place the city under my protection. This is the word of Nilda. News of this event spread across the kingdom. The city was vulnerable without the staff to protect it. Who could be powerful enough to enter the temple and bring the staff back? The High Council of Sages have turned to you. They remember the deeds of your past and implore you to help the city once again. If you are successful, you will be granted royal honors and riches beyond your imagination you have accepted. Obviously, the story does not match with this game 
uh, again because originally you were playing with your characters not descendants but uh, anyway So, unlike the first game, there is no final main boss. Instead, you have to go through the maze and fight the five magical pieces of armor required for getting the Staff of Nilda. Uh, the game is shorter than the first because it has fewer floors and actually seems to take less effort in leveling up, but it also has more direction and more to do than just grind. You have to do some item searching in order to unlock access to each piece of the armor, and this time you are forced to visit every floor, because certain parts can only be accessed by a ladder on another level. There's no quick elevator between floors either, so if you want to go back to town, you have to walk there and back. Fighting the pieces of armor is really the most difficult part of the game but they do seem to get slightly easier as you go on. Being magical, they have a high magic resistance, and the armor and shield especially have high defense and hit points, which makes it hard to even hit them, let alone defeat them. In the previous game, I sort of ignored spells that didn't heal or do damage, but in this one, I found that using spells to raise your defense and lower your enemies is essential to beating the armor pieces. It also helps to skulk around the fourth floor or lower and pick up some nice item drops because trying to beat them with gear that you buy in town can take a really long time. Uh, despite all that, you don't have to be very high level to do it. I found you can defeat them being around level 10. The game does force you to level up a bit, however, because the last piece of armor is behind a door that you can only go through if you already have all the armor pieces. So the only way to get to it, then, is to teleport to it, and you don't get the teleport spell until level 12 or 13. There is a Murphy's Ghost in this game that you can grind, but trying to make 100,000 plus experience at 700 a fight can take a while. One nice thing about beating the magic armor is that afterward you can wear the items, and aside from being really good, they heal you as you walk, which is helpful. And you don't even have to be wearing it, having it equipped to gain that benefit, so you can pass a piece of armor uh, between party members, and just by holding it and walking around they can get healed. Uh, but to finish the game, you actually need to give all the pieces to one character to wear, and then send them alone down to find Nilda's hidey hole, who then teleports you back to the temple and gives you the magic staff, and then you just walk back to the surface and get rewarded, but you do so naked because Nilda takes all the pieces of armor away from you. If you try to enter the last room with more than just the one person in your party, you get teleported back to the surface, and if you don't have the armor at all, you get obliterated and have to start again. Uh, I feel the ending is a little anticlimactic, though, because you spend all this time collecting the items and getting down to the bottom of the dungeon, and then you're basically told, yep, you win. Uh, I also think that hiding the last piece of armor behind a door you need all the armor to get through is kind of cheap. Most people, when they get to that door, are going to think that they missed something and then scour every inch of the dungeon looking for secrets they aren't going to think about teleporting to it. Considering that the original game came out in 1982, you couldn't just go to the internet and look it up either. Someone would have to tell you about it, or you'd have to buy a hint book if you couldn't figure it out. And that's assuming they even had a hint book for the game.
Anyway, that's been Wizardry 2. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.